Admiral's Log. Date, January 1st, 1900. I'm still getting used to my new title, First Sea Lord. My days of commanding a torpedo boat and a cruiser and finally a battleship are completely over. I'm now in charge of all of the Royal Navy, or well, what is left of it after being left in shambles due to budget cuts. Our new Prime Minister, Mr. Gascoigne Cecil, has however decided to restore the Royal Navy to its former glory, and he's put me in charge of this enormous project. He's provided a considerable amount of funds to create a new navy from scratch. There are some requirements, though. The Royal Navy is a bold one, and it likes to be seen. We have to show the flag. It needs big ships only. These torpedo boats, and especially the newly invented destroyers, are not an option for this navy. Royal Navy warships are desired and required to be able to take on any threats, big or small. And this is going to require a mixed armament. The British also have a stiff upper lip and never turn away from a fight. Retreating in battle is never an option. And finally, the PM believes that the Royal Navy should return to its ways of having outstanding crews, keeping their ships ship shape in Bristol fashion, so crew training will be a paramount objective. Now, it is up to me to design the new ships, deploy them as I see fit, and give the captains their training on how to use them in battle. When I will find rest to sleep again, I don't know. But let's begin the project of restoring the Royal Navy. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to a new campaign for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I hope you like that little intro. Um, it is time to start anew, but not entirely anew because it's not 1890, it's 1900. I've off-screen completed an 1890 campaign for the British, and now it's time to start one in 1900. I'm going to set the difficulty hard, because I have found that the normal difficulty is relatively easy. Opponents will be historical, and I'm going to create my own fleets, as I have mentioned. Now, the requirements in the intro were, of course, my own, but they are definitely required as part of the campaign. I'm going to go for big ships only. I'm going to create a majestic navy and take on the Germans. Now, being in 1900s means that I have access to some nice new technology relative to what we had in the previous campaign. So, battleships it is. We have access to the battleship 3 hull. These ships are not cheap. They start at 6.3 million and that's without even going with any kind of an upgrade superstructure or whatever you want on that ship. My overall budget is decent. I have 173 million, so I can craft a lot of these ships. And considering that, especially in the early phase, you do not have to worry about crew, I can get quite a lot of crew on these ships. Now, we're going to go straight to Harvey Steel. Um, I don't mind making an effort to build a very potent ship here, because with that, I'll be able to keep them alive and make sure that they're going to live to fight another day. Especially, as the PM said, we will never turn away from a fight. We will not run. We will not be deterred. And this is going to require a very survivable warship. Now, when it comes to firepower, um, it is going to depend on my engine efficiency, so my, my air intake. Um, currently, I only have 34%. I cannot really do much other than go for induced boilers, and that instantly goes it brings it to 97, but it also makes the ship more expensive, uh, as well as taking a bit more of my capacity to put weapon systems on. Now, these new hulls, relative to what we have, are capable of fitting the new 13-inch guns. I, however, think that's a bit much. We're still not going to be particularly accurate with these ships. Um... And I think that based on the lower accuracy, we'll also have to close into, let's say, 5,000 meter range. And 5,000 meter range means that at about 5,000 meter range, we can pen 14.7 inches or equivalent. Now, with the advances in armor quality, that means that you still have to consider that uh, an 11 inch shell might not be sufficient, depending, of course, on the powder that you pick. Because this is going to pen 14.7 inches of armor, but this ship, as a main belt, has 9.3 plus 48%. So let's say plus 50%, and all of a sudden you're looking at almost 14 inches of armor. Or actually over 14 inches of armor. I could, however, pick the 11-incher and then provide it with a super heavy shell. 
and see if that is going to, oh, sorry, with a heavy shell, that's going to push it to 15.7. That should be sufficient. Now, I would like to enhance the loading capacity as well as the turning rate of these things. I want to have Barbette 1. Barbette 2 would be better, but I still have to put some other stuff on this ship. I'm going to reduce speed to 21 knots. And, um, yeah, we're going to stick... Oh, actually, hydraulic steering is nice. You get a bit more speed loss, but your turning rate improves as well as your rudder shift. So, considering torpedo threats, torpedo boat threats, I'm going to go with that. Then, I have access to the gun cotton. This does make my chance of fire a bit worse. And I think that's the chance of fire on my ship, not theirs. Because theirs is plus 6%. But again, 7.5% shell damage is nice to have. As well as that muzzle velocity. Because it means that with those super heavy shells, or with the heavy shells, I'm more likely to punch right through their side armor. And then, propellant. This is gun range. I don't care about gun range, because currently the guns have a range of 13.7, but they won't be able to hit anything at that range. So let's just say... Uh, or actually, hold on. This is additional shell pen as well, and muzzle velocity. The shell cost goes up by 50%, meaning that currently I'm at 8.4 million, but I'm going to go to... Oh, is that it? Never mind. I'm fine. Range is currently 15,302 kilometers, which for this campaign, operating against the Germans, is way more than I would ever need. I can still fit a couple of casemate guns. Um, these could be useful against torpedo boats, especially given my increased accuracy from having a stereoscopic rangefinder. And they only weigh 7 tons. But I'm more interested in putting some secondary guns on first in the form of uh, 5 inches. Let's see. Considering the threat could be a heavy cruiser, um, I need the heavy cruiser to go down very quick. Can I pen 6.1 inches? Is that enough? If I were to go for a new design, an armored cruiser, and I don't change the design, it has a 4.9 armor belt with currently no armor quality increase, but that could very easily be done. So you're now, let's say, looking at 5 inches plus 45%. So that's 7.5 inches of armor. That means that the current Rodney class of battleships cannot do that with a secondary inch or secondary 5-inch gun. The 6-inch can, but they're substantially heavier. If I were to put these here, I could engage virtually any threat. And I can have more of those. Um... Yeah, I think that is doable. I could also have these relatively smaller ones. All the way up to the 8 inches. Oh, that's a ton of firepower. It is a reload of 41 and a half seconds though. That is pretty bad. Especially when you're considering lighter threats. So let's go with a 6 inch there. And a couple of 4 inches here and here. This way all the guns still have decent fields of fire. I'm going to push the gun out a bit more to increase the field of fire. This is going to counteract the weight offset. Then, um, when it comes to the crew, let's see, how many do I need now? How many do I need now? 762, and that's with standard. If I go for cramped, it's 627. So that is a substantial difference in crew. Uh, it doesn't really give you that much. It just means that if I have cramped quarters and I start losing crew, I start losing skills. So accuracy, aiming time, such as that. Uh, I'm going to set it to standard anyway, so that if some crew dies, the ship is not going to have any kind of negative effects, at least not yet. I also have the opportunity to add torpedo launchers to this ship. These are going to be close-in weapons that I can have 17 inch that is very nice and I can have them at fast meaning that these boys have a range of one kilometer a, a 38 knot speed and they do 322 damage as was directed by the Prime Minister I want to be able to take on any kind of a threat now sadly I cannot put an additional gun there barbettes are not yet suitable for uh, well for placement on these ships 
There we go. Now we also have a very nice secondary armament. We got the six, we got the two fours, we got a whole bunch of threes. And between all of those different um, armaments, we should be able to keep these little torpedo boats that the Germans might have at bay. I'm also going to go for the triple steam expansion engine. As you can see, the ship is getting consistently more expensive. Nevertheless, I'm going to continue building it out. I don't really mind about the budget. I'm more of a fan of having a um, ship that is more expensive, yet more efficient, rather than the other way around. Now, what else? Armor. I'm going to be pretty pretty broadside with this ship most of the time. So let's say I want to have 5 inches of armor belt. I am going to increase the barbette 2. When it comes to the citadel, I only have access to citadel 1. Uh, let's armor the superstructure a little, because I'm going to be also going in pretty close to smaller ships. The main deck... Reduce that. Aft deck, improve that to one inch. And there, it's too heavy. Conning tower has to survive at all costs. 14 inch. Or actually, let's go back to 13 inch and put a bit more on the guns. There, 10 inch on the 11 inch guns. The six inch guns already maxed out. The four inch guns already maxed out. Top armor, I find not that important. 1.5 ought to do. And there, with one ton to spare, we have our first class of ship. This is the Rodney class. These guys are going to carry us through the campaign until we have something better. Save that design. How many can I build? These guys are going to cost me 9 million apiece. Compare that to the previous campaign, where I did have these ships at, I think, 2.7 million. So, in a span of just 10 years, these ships have gotten substantially more expensive. Alright, I'm going to throw a lot of these out there. We're going to build... How many can I field? I'm going to field 12 of them. That's the fleet. Now we're going to find a way to put them. Now, um, compared to the previous version of the campaign, we have access to the Move Ships button. So if I have a ship, for example, in Yarmouth and I want to bring it to Sutherland, I can have a ship and select it. And this is very nice because it means that I can more accurately set ships on any given locations. Let's have some of the ships on Scapa Flow. I don't think we're going to need too many. So this one's going to be in Scapa Flow. Um, I want two ships operating out of Sunderland. That's the Queen Elizabeth and the King Edward. Operating out of Sunderland. We also have the hull port, but it only has one, really one slot for a battleship. So that means that the Malaya is going to sit over there in hull. Yarmouth can also house one battleship. Yarmouth. Dover. It's a very important strait here, so I'd say two to three battleships potentially. So let's set the Hannibal and the Goliath over there. Um, which one was that again? Dover, yes. So you two are going to sit in Dover. And then we have five ships left. Now Portsmouth is a very large port and so is Plymouth. It's just that I don't expect the Germans to be operating all the way out there. You never know, but I don't expect it. So instead, I'm more inclined to put some ships in Portsmouth and potentially another one in Dover. So let's set this ship up. You're going to go to Dover. I'm going to send you two to Portsmouth. And what are we going to do with the Canada and the Erin? Ah, uh, Sunderland. North Sea is going to probably be one of the main areas. Yarmouth. Uh, there. Hold on. They can house that much? Because these are 18,000 ton ships. I don't think they can house that much. So we're not going to be able to put those in Yarmouth. But, well. Let's just see how the game treats it. <laughs> All ships. We're going to switch to sea control. Add the crew so they're automatically replenished. 
Um, when it comes to other ships, I'm not likely to pick any just yet. I first want to set my research up. Considering this campaign is going to revolve all around battleships and big ships, I need to have a few things. One is maneuver warfare. It improves initial crew training and it reduces crew training time. I want to make sure that this speeds up because a higher crew training means that those battleships are going to be more effective. I also want ideally bigger guns, which will mean I can get the Mark uh, 2 12 inches, which would be nice because I'm currently looking at. Hold on, did I give those things? Oh, I gave them for 11 inches, so that's fine. The 12 inches Mark II would be great, but it's fine if they take 20 months. I'm not sure how long this campaign is going to last. Cruiser design, I don't care about. Hull construction, I do. But I think we're... Now, we're not interested in destroyer design nor cruiser design. Although you can get some pretty sizable cruisers up to here. Hull strengthening. Engines. Nah, I don't really care that much about engines. Armor quality, though, that's important. Crip 1. We're going to speed that up and it's going to only take 12 months. And then armor forging. Reduces armor weights and reduces ship construction time. That's also interesting. Um, if I invest, however, it's going to take three months longer for control. Oh, sorry, for armor quality. Um, Coincidence Rangefinder 2. Yeah, I'll gladly take that. It's going to take 10 months instead of 24. That's a substantial improvement. These things I really, really want. Okay. Then the dockyard. Dockyard and crew training. Crew training is critical. I want a very experienced crew. I'm just going to max out all these sliders. I also want to improve the tech budget. And we're going to increase the size of the shipyard. Uh, let's first set it to 6 months. Nah. 12 months. 1500 tons extra. Okay. Let's begin. Alright. Our ships have been completed as part of the initial campaign start. You just get these for free, essentially. And we can see where the Germans want to fight. The Germans seemingly are relocating some ships from Danzig, a couple of battleships, to Bremen. And these guys are moving to Helgoland. It's just two destroyers and two torpedo boats. Currently, no engagements. That's fine. Battle. We have two of our battleships engaging a battle... Sorry, a heavy cruiser and two DDs. This should not be a very difficult fight. Let's begin. Let's see if this first test is something that my battleships can actually survive. The enemy's been spotted to the east. Let's first admire the Goliath. There's the 11-inch gun, the other 11-inch turret, the 6-inch, the 4-inchers, and a lot of 3s. The ships are capable. They have maximum bulkheads. They're very survivable. 21-inch, oh, sorry, 21 knots. Lots of armor, and including the superstructure armor, I don't have that much to fear from the destroyers. Except, of course, for torpedoes. But if worst comes to worst and we get hit by a torpedo, I still have the anti-torpedo 1, which should keep me safe, and anti-flood 2, which will mean that any water that I do take on is quickly going to get pumped back out. Let's set the Goliath to a slightly slower speed so the QE can catch up and just see where the enemy is at. Now, this was a very anticlimactic first encounter with the German fleet because, as opposed to the British Empire, the Germans apparently do not believe in very visible ships, and we never even located each other. So this turned into a draw, but it's not a bad situation because it gives my cr my crews more time to train, as well as giving my ships more time, well, to let's say get more tech, because that technology is going to be important, especially getting better rangefinders. Right, continuing on. We have an encounter, again, a border patrol. As we enter hostile waters, enemy pa ships block our path. Once again, a heavy cruiser and two DDs. At a very peculiar tonnage of 694, and the Hertha at 100, sorry, uh, 10,542. Let's see about taking on these ships. And this time around, the Germans are there. The Queen Elizabeth is the first ship to take contact, and the Goliath is once again with her. We have been spotted, and the enemy appears to be out here somewhere. There we go, there's our first actual contact. It's one of the destroyers. 
The Germans are coming at us with one of these small boats. And it could be a nice target practice for our crews, especially those of the secondary guns. Because these things are small. 11-inch um, guns will probably tear them apart. But, sadly, the 11-inch guns take 53.2 seconds to reload with our cadet-level crew. For the Goliath, that's a bit less, I suppose. Or actually, no, not yet. Because we still have a pretty, <laughs> pretty green crew. Uh, the cadets are still slightly worse. It's 53.2 versus 51.3. Regardless, these guys are going to need training. But, fortunately, we have more guns. Six, four, and three-inch guns are all opening up against the target. Now, let's do a visual inspection of this German destroyer. Insofar as they still have a destroyer. Based on visual inspection, we can see that the ship has three four-inch guns and one two-inch gun. As well as, you can kind of see them here, through the fire, torpedo launchers. One dual torpedo launcher on the bow. Based on tech and era, if that is a normal torpedo launcher, I think they have one kilometer range, 1.5. And that means that we are still well outside of their torpedo range. Their destroyer, based on how quickly it flooded, I think has few bulkheads. So that means we have some options here. Oh, standard bulkheads even. It just got flooded a lot. And it's flooding again with another compartment. And that's the first kill. The first kill goes to the British. Without taking so much as a scratch. There's two points of damage done by the Germans. This next destroyer seemingly is going to go the same way. Uh, it got hit, what, once? I think it was the Goliath that did that. Yeah. Now, take note of the increased crew level. Here we got green. And these guys are cadets. Which means that the accuracy on the Goliath's guns are just flat out better. I would love to have seen what the torpedo range is. 1.5. Yeah, as expected. So that means that this ship is definitely not anywhere near torpedo range. My torpedoes, for reference, are close in. They are not strictly last-ditch weapons, but if I have a battleship against me that simply does not want to take a hint from an 11-inch gun, I can always send it an underwater 17-inch care package. Now, that's the second DD down. We have done 1.7k damage versus 2 points of damage taken. And we have, however, lost one crew member. One cadet aboard the Queen Elizabeth is no longer with us. Now, with the loss of their destroyer scout force, it seems that the heavy cruiser, which was operating somewhere here, has ceased fire, as it probably can't spot our beautiful new ships anymore. So we're going to have to wait until we once again find this heavy cruiser. Once again, it seems that the Germans have, at the loss of their ships, taken the hint and immediately turned around. So the heavy cruiser was just never sighted. It does, however, show us quite a lot of information about this ship, especially of note is the speed of 21.7. We know what armament she has, uh, a substantial amount of 5-inch guns, which, if I had smaller ships, would have been a problem. But currently, with the battleships, not a problem at all. Lots of engine horsepower, and when it comes to the bulkheads, many bulkheads means that these things might be somewhat more difficult to sink. Let's see if we can find another battle. The Germans have lost a transport. When it comes to fleet power or uh, force projection, we're not doing that well. When it comes to the budget, I'm not doing that well either. But that's currently because I'm very quickly speeding up crew training, transport capacity, as well as the tank budget. And especially the tank budget seems to take a large chunk of money. But then again, I believe in a modern navy. And in order to do that, we're going to have to invest. We've got two conflicts here. One battleship of ours versus one battleship of theirs. Let's see if the lonely Goliath, I'm not sure where the Queen Elizabeth went, is capable of taking on the Saxon. That is, if we can find it. Because so far, that seemingly has been a bit of a problem. But there she is. The Saxon. Immediately we start exchanging fire. 
The Goliath is still at green crew level training. Uh, the Germans seem to have quite a lot of secondaries going on here. They have their main armament of 9-inch guns, which means that with my armor I can pretty safely stay at range and not worry about them. They have 23-inch guns. They have a couple of uh, dual 4-inch guns and then a whole lot of single 4-inch guns. Where are you packing all your single 4-inch guns? Oh, the casemates. Six single 3-inch guns and two single 2-inch guns. Based on angle and approach, I'm going to switch to high explosive and just let this thing take some high explosive damage before worrying about going with armor piercing. There is the opportunity, perhaps, to get plunging fire, but that would kind of require hitting the ship in the first place. Let's see how these British ships hold up against their German counterparts. And I still have an underwater surprise. But an issue that I have, potentially, is that these German ships have all these secondaries and can somewhat effectively burn me down. Despite a substantial amount of bulkheads and very... Well... No, sorry, that's anti-flooding. Um, superstructure armor, that might save me here. The Saxon. Maximum bulkheads. Very nice. 22% chance to pen, and that's with 11-inch shells. Heavy 11-inch shells, I might add. Why is that? 4.9-inch fore belt, 3.5-inch aft belt, 11.1-inch main belt. Okay, those things have more of a main belt than I do. Yet, they have smaller guns, so their ability to damage the Goliath is similarly impaired. They also come with torpedoes, but their torpedoes have more range. They have anti-torp 1 and anti-flood 1. This could turn into a bit of a slugfest. I want every gun to be firing high explosive at the enemy and to slowly but steadily do damage against it. We're going to slowly cripple that armor and once it's done, we're going to blow it apart. If we haven't burned it down at that point. It's firing AP at this stage. Eh. It's a uh, 35-34%. Nah, the Saxon's already turning away. I don't really see it happening. Not yet. Destroyed a secondary gun. Okay, they lost one three or two incher. It's the one up there. Now, I suspect that fire damage against the Saxons not gonna... Oh. Excuse me, you just <laughs> destroyed a second or a main gun. I think that trying to burn down the Saxons is not going to do that well. Because she has quite a lot of bulkheads. She does, however, immediately take damage to her rudder. It's her bow turret main gun that got destroyed. At the current angle of approach... She's going to struggle a lot to do damage against my ship, especially in most parts of it. Um, the superstructure, of course, is fragile. Or at least a lot more fragile with 1.5 inches of armor. Accuracy? Wow. Accuracy is fantastic. I, they got 9.2 against me, but I have 22% against them. I have a stereo rangefinder 1. They have a coincidence rangefinder 1. Arguably, at this range, that should benefit them, but seemingly it doesn't, or not yet. Looks like the Saxon's taking quite a beating here. Her secondary tower's been destroyed, leading to a loss of accuracy. She is crewed by cadets, and they've already lost 13% of crew? Wow. That's going to cost you some accuracy, aiming time, reloading time, and a lot of damage control. Now, this ship hasn't exactly come out unscathed, but with the loss of their crew... What do you have? Spacious quarters? Standard quarters. With the loss of their crew, they only have 80% for secondary guns, whereas mine are full. I do have to keep a note on the torpedoes, though. 
The Goliath can definitely take a torpedo, potentially two, but I'm just entirely uninterested in having the ship back in dry dock just four months after she was launched. That would not be a great way to start the campaign. There you go. That's another funnel destroyed. That's excellent, because funnel destruction means less acceleration speed. So the moment that they take damage to their engines, trying to speed back up is going to be difficult. The Goliath has already done 1.1k of damage, 1.2 versus damage taken, 67. Now this is supposed to be a difficult enemy. Or at least the AI is set to hard. Fire damage so far, not very effective as predicted, it's just 203. The 6-inch guns are... Oh, there we go again. I think the 6 was kind of getting obstructed by the 4, based on the sailing angle. Let's open up slightly. Fire set. 207 damage. It's slowly, slowly, slowly ticking up. I think trying to burn this thing down is not the way to go. Trying to flood it out might not be the way to go either. So then just flat out structural damage. And the pen angle is improving. Chance to pen me. It's going up slightly. Auto selecting. Now we have almost 50% chance. We have 50% chance to pen. Let's turn. At the risk of the Goliath. But I think we can get quite some damage in here. Damage to the main tower. An engine has been damaged. The torpedo launcher has been destroyed on the Goliath. Which one, though? I suspect it's the starboard one, but I'm not sure. Now, the Saxon is turning, so trying to get the torpedo to hit it is difficult. But I want to try it regardless. The torpedo is out to meet the Saxon. <clears throat> Let's see. I suspect that she's going to turn hard to port and evade it. If she is even fast enough to get to it. Uh, not quite. Didn't quite dodge it there. She can retaliate with her bow launcher. Exactly like that. Hard to port. Yeah, we'll be able to dodge that. We'll be fine. But Saxon is flooding. Seriously flooding. If I can get the stern launcher... Oh, she fired again. Stern launcher... Out. How expensive are your battleships? 6.8 million. <laughs> Mine are 9.4. Which means that they can afford quite a few more battleships relative to myself. But that's fine. That's fine. If you look at how much damage the Saxon has taken... <laughs> ...as compared to the Goliath... ...it really, really isn't a problem. This poor ship. They've lost 24% of their crew. I've lost 8%. Which means... Um, Wow, torpedoes are at 15%? That's pretty terrible. <laughs> I suppose that's going to mean that my torpedo reload is going to... Yeah, it's going to blossom quite a bit. I still got the bow launcher, if I'm not mistaken. And if I can jam a torpedo into the rudder compartment, I can flood out that ship. The Saxon is basically dead in the water. She has three damaged engines, a damaged rudder, and she has a one damaged funnel. So her ability to get out of here is nothing. 0.6. She is dead in the water. I'm going to just cruise around at leisurely 5 knots. And try and jam a torpedo into that ship. I wonder, however, when I'm going to get a counter torpedo. Let's do another port turn. Aggressive torpedo launch if you can. Although I think we might have used the bow launcher already. Shit. She had her stern launcher ready and I did not. That's gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt as bad as the Saxon, however. Because that ship... 16% buoyancy. 17%. 
16% again, they're flooding again. The Goliath is down to 84%, I think we're going to drop as low as 75 before we fix that. But the Germans are going to take the first real big loss here. I mean, the loss of two destroyers is sad, but survivable. The loss of a battleship early on in the campaign could prove pretty crippling. Because my plan is to just keep pumping out battleships, especially higher tech ones. And then make sure that I can just blockade Germany and win the war that way. I think we have them dead to rights. Starboard turn. Let's see if we can get the port launcher to fire. Provided we still have a port launcher. Yeah, 83% buoyancy. We're fine. Torpedo away. Impact. Two more compartments are flooding. The ones which were not flooded yet. So I hit them exactly where I wanted. And that is the end of the first German battleship. Job well done by the Goliath. At a 11.1% 11, 11 loss of crew. So. That is our first kill. Getting a 1710 victory points. And that means that we have a bit of a lead. 2,149 points versus 781 for the Germans. When it comes to their fleet power, they have a lot more ships. 62 versus my 12. I still have 59 million in budget. I'm going to wait until the research is done for the stereoscopic rangefinder, or sorry, the coincidence rangefinder, and then I'm going to build a new ship because I want to get a better battleship. I might even wait for this one to get Krupp 1 ready and I get an even better ship. So, join me next time. The next episode will be up very shortly and I shall hope that you guys join me then. If you've enjoyed this, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to join the next one and I shall see you guys then for more of the campaign.